Go for it. Oh, yeah. Three pre-rolls. A big return episode of JRVP. AG1, thank you for being our partners. AG1 can give you major benefits like gut and mood support, boosted energy, and even healthier looking skin, hair, and nails. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com slash JRVP. That's drinkag1.com slash JRVP. Also saying thanks to our sponsor, Stitch Fix. If you're tired of the endless search for the perfect outfit, Stitch Fix is here to make it easy. Use their online platform and uh, expert stylist. Try Stitch Fix today at stitchfix.com slash JRVP. You'll get 25% off when you keep everything in your fix. That's stitchfix.com slash JRVP for 25% off today. Stitchfix.com slash JRVP. And finally, it's jamesallen.com. That's right, the online destination for designing a custom engagement ring she'll love more easily than you ever thought possible. You save up to 50% compared to traditional stores. Get 25% off your order when you go to jamesallen.com and use the code JRVP. That's code JRVP at jamesallen.com for 25% off. Three pre-rolls can't hold the candle to what's coming up. Uh, We have got, what do we got today? A longtime Penn State professor uh, arrested for an amazing reason. Uh, Manager at the Harvard University morgue indicted last week. And yes, your recommendation station. <laughs> Coming up on <laughs> Jesselnick and Rosenthal Vanity Project. It's episode 208. Jesse B. Episode 208. Really fuck this up. Oh, what the hell? Oh, shit. All right. You have a quote, Anthony? Well, we didn't hear, we didn't hear oh, the, the lady. Junior Vice President. Why is that so low? No quote this week. <laughs> Sorry. One more time. We're leaving all this in, by the way. Junior Vice President. Thanks, Erica. No quote this week. <laughs> we don't deserve a quote. What happened, guys? <laughs> it's been a while. <laughs> we took a couple weeks off and took just, a weeks we're off, ready. Came in here. And I'm like, oh, good. Everyone seems rested and relaxed. And then relaxed. you guys just shit the bed. Yeah. And when I was like, hey, I just saw you shit the bed. You opened up your mouths and vomited. That's what happened <laughs> to start this episode. Well, why do we have to leave it all in? You know, we, we wanted we have to leave it all. in. Well, we wanted to get you uh, back in the mood. Get excited. It's funny. I feel like there's nothing you like more than um, Aaron and I messing up. I do, I, do not, I do not get upset when you guys mess up. I'm always a little, like, aghast might be a strong term, but I'm just surprised that it could go so wrong. Um, yeah, it was a uh, good start. We had a couple weeks off. We, uh, we, Greg was gone. Where were you last week? I was in Massachusetts. You were in the, in the vineyard. Uh, I did some traveling. Um, we taped two episodes uh, a couple weeks ago, and that was fun. I, I like taping two episodes back to back because the second episode gets real goofy. You know, I wonder, like people were accusing us, not accusing us, but they said, we're like, you guys look like you smoked weed in that last episode. <laughs> we did not. We just taped them back to back. Um, but it does get a little more fun that I was wondering, what if we taped like four in a row? You know, if we did it just to be like, hey... We, are, we have the time to do them weekly, but I want to see how weird this gets. I would think the third, fourth, fifth episode, we'd be speaking different languages. Like it wouldn't have anything to do with English and it wouldn't make any sense, but I think it would be fun that one day I would like to do that. Well, today would have been a great day. I wish you had brought this uh, idea to my attention. I wish you had brought this up uh, earlier than yesterday being like, oh, hey, by the way, I'm going to be in Japan for three weeks, maybe tape two. Tomorrow, you had an idea for a refillable thing we could do, right? And I'm like, I did, but then I forgot it, and now we have 24 hours to think of it again. We're not doing that. We're not just going to half-ass a double episode. But if we think of something, I think it would be fun. I think it's Now I think it might have just hit me. Was it 4th of July related, something about uh, America's birthday? No idea. 
I forget I have, what it was. I have no it's idea. It's like four ways, you know, we're just ways we're going to be patriotic. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be in Japan the next three episodes. I mean, we have talked about that. But you're right. I realized once we were revisiting the situation uh, just yesterday, it was too late to, to plan the, the double episode. Mm -hmm. um, but this would have been the, the time to do the four back to back because I'm going to do three episodes in Japan. I'm not messing around. I'm taking a three and a half week trip. Family's staying there for seven. So you just get the full uh, Rosenthal when I get back. If you want to hang out, you know. I do. Now's the time. I do want to hang out. It's I got to go. I got to go see the new house while the kids aren't there. <laughs> um, I had a. Uh, I've had a good time the last couple of weeks. Uh, I've been traveling a little bit. I went back to Connecticut with uh, with Liz to uh, to kind of hang out with her mom, catch out, check out the uh, the town she's from, Stanford. Uh, there's a great pizza place called Colony, which is delicious pizza. Uh, if you are from Stanford, Connecticut, and you know Colony, give me a shout. It's good. I liked my time in Connecticut. Like being back more. Get, leaving from Mississippi this weekend. Going to do a couple casinos in Mississippi. Half sold. Uh, ticket sales have not been strong in Mississippi like they have been around the rest of the country. To be expected. But that's a casino? It's good. Two casinos, yeah. Two casinos I feel back like casinos to casinos are always a different vibe, It's different, but it's like, but I'm doing casinos that are sold out you know, in different parts of the country and then Mississippi. But I have family. My aunt Robin is coming with her family to the second show, so it's like okay, don't don't you can't mail this in, you know what I'm saying? This is this is my first big hours. I've been doing clubs, doing 45, 50 minutes. This will be an hour, adding a new story into this, and very excited just to kick it off. So I'm not half an ass in anything because it's half a crowd. I'm coming to deliver. I like when I go to a place like Mississippi and they don't give a shit about me, but the people who do come care very much. So it's like let me put on a good show for the real people, you know. Not these fucking scumbags. The people who come to see me in Mississippi, it's like the 500, 600 people in Mississippi who aren't racist. They get tickets <laughs> sent to them. So have fun with that. Um, I've been having a good time with Rummy. Rummy's been, uh, been stepping up his game, getting a little more cuddly. He has a little, there's like a, a staircase in my house, in my condo. It's like on the bottom floor, and it's like a little, it's like a little bit of room. You, can't, you could use it for storage, but it's like I put nothing in there. And now it's Rummy's room, you know? It's like I put a bunch of blankets, a bunch of pillows. He goes under there and sleeps so he can still look at me while he's laying there. And I've decided I want to get, Liz, and, uh, Liz is uh, okayed this. I want one of our fans, one of our listeners, who works with wood, a woodworker, if you will. I want a wooden sign that says Rummy's Room with the R's in Rummy and Room backwards, like red rum. I, w I thought maybe wood burning, maybe some wood carving, see what our fans are up to, what they're capable of. Liz wants written in red on a piece of wood, Rummy's Room. So I'm leaving it up to the fans. I'm going to come in next week. We'll see what's here for me. Is it going to be a Rummy's Room sign like I asked for? <laughs> like I, like are I you going to pay for this? No. I mean, that's expensive. You know? If I'm going to pay for it, I wouldn't source it out to the fans. Well, what if There's someone. Someone's listening to this podcast right now with a pencil behind their ear covered in sawdust that's who i'm talking to i'm talking to you rummy's room r-u-m-m-y apostrophe s r-o-o-m yeah, the, the two r's are backwards are they capitalized and the rest are lowercase or you know it okay well you want to spell that out i would say you could get sampled i guess that wouldn't really wouldn't work for wood cutting no. though no like people could send in what uh, a drawing of what what it would look like um, it's a lot to ask because you'll get promotion. If you actually run like a woodworking business and you deliver on this, you know, you'll get mentioned on one of the biggest podcasts in the world. Yeah, definitely the second biggest podcast on all things comedy. <laughs> but, sure. but, um, if you come in second place, he's not going to mention you at all. So if I get a bunch of them, I'll, I'll give you guys all shout outs. Um, I had a funny, uh, like, listen, when, when I'm walking rummy. <laughs> but make it fast, because if he gets a bunch of them, and then he gets more the next week, the people that are coming the next week, it, we've already talked about it. It's too That's late. right. Yeah. Uh, when I'm walking rummy, and people say, can I pet your dog? I love to say no. I love mm. it. I enjoy it. I found good ways to be like, no, you cannot. Uh, and I just say no and laugh at them. And Liz always gets annoyed. She's like, that's rude. But I'm like, rummy, you, you can't pet rummy. Rummy will sometimes barks. Sometimes it's just like, no. And sometimes it's just like, yeah, go ahead and pet me. But I always say no just because I don't want to deal with it. And Liz is like, ah, oh, you should say yes. You should say yes. I go, well, Liz and I go get coffee yesterday. I go in to get coffee. Liz stays out there with Rummy. And I come out and she's like, I just fucked up. 
I'm like, what, what happened? And she said, these two girls walk up. And Rummy likes girls way more than guys. So if it's like, if it's someone's going to pet and it's a girl, it's like, okay, maybe. But I would still say no. Liz sees this girl come up, these two girls, and they're like, oh my God, is he friendly? And Liz goes, yeah. And then the girl goes to pet Rummy, and Rummy loses his mind. It's just like, she does the thing, the slow approach, where she, like, if you just walk over and pet him, he'd be fine. But when you're like, uh, yeah, that's when he's like, what the fuck? And he barks. And then Liz is like, oh, sorry. And the girl just looks at her like, what the fuck? You told me it was friendly. And she's like, I and now Liz feels bad. Like, that's why I always say no. Just but right you, off should the say, you should say, you could say, yeah, he's usually friendly. Except with like cuts. That's what, you, that's what you say. You'd be like, sometimes he's friendly. Uh, yeah, well, you could be like, I don't know what's wrong with you that he did that. But I thought the funniest thing Liz could have said in that situation would be, is your dog friendly? Yes, he is. Goes to pet. Rummy tries to kill her and then goes, ha just kidding. He's not friendly. <laughs> I thought that would be hilarious. That you could never get mad at someone if they did that to you, pulled that trick. That maybe that's my thing from now on. But I think now I finally got people to stop petting my dog. Yeah, Why, Liz was the way in. Story? No, Liz was the way in. You could you could pet Rummy through Liz, not through me. And now Liz is like she sees the error of her ways. But I think it's fun. Is your dog friendly? Yes. I'm just kidding. He's he he hates people. <laughs> I that's think old, I think um, stop it stop it before the, it even happens. That's an old Pink Panther joke too. Um, Whoa. He says, uh, "Does your dog bite?" And he says, "No," and then the dog bites him, and he goes, "Well, that's not my dog." Mm. Oh yeah, I mean it's a different joke. Yeah, yeah different. But uh, yeah, I, I kind of remember that now yeah. that you said it. Uh, speaking of great entertainment, I bet Greg hasn't seen this show yet. Aaron, have you been watching The Idol? No, I have not watched The Idol. Have you seen The Idol? I have not. I've heard about it. Best show on television. Mm. Best show on television, guys. I know everyone's still like kind of coming down from Succession. Succession is shit. Succession is young Sheldon to the idols' Big Bang Theory. Is that is everyone on board with this? Does this make sense Hell to everybody? Yeah. Love Sheldon. Finally, finally getting to see myself on television. <laughs> it feels like a win for diversity and a win for me. I know, if you haven't seen the show, the character The Weeknd plays, mm -hmm. who is called The Weeknd, as far as I'm concerned, is the most charismatic, sexiest. Like, Aaron, if you, your greatest fantasy, it's you and The Weeknd. What's happening in that fantasy? <laughs> I, um, you know, probably sing some of those tunes to me, I guess. Okay, then you're good news because every song on the idol is a weekend song. Okay. Which I did not know Liz had to point this out to me. That's good. I only know the one weekend song, I Can't Feel My Face When I'm With You, mm -hmm. but I like it. Oh, I like it. <laughs> that song. I love it. I know that one. But listen, if Aaron, if, I know in your head, you were probably too embarrassed to say it. You were going to say, I would love more than anything to be in the car with the weekend and my friend is driving us and the weekend's going down on me in the backseat. And it's a convertible, and it's the middle of the day, and we're on Highland. Is that what you were thinking? Yeah, now that you mention it, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. that, that's what happens in, in this week's episode. On Highland, huh? Busy. Everything the weekend says, you're like, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. I wish I could vote for him for president. He goes down on his girlfriend? Mm-hmm. Okay. He goes down on the idol. But he's like the main guy. You he's know, not I the call, idol? I don't call it the idol. I call it the weekend show. <laughs> and it's so good. He is, uh, honestly, it's just charisma dripping from his pores. Mm. And if you can watch an entire 30-minute episode without masturbating to the weekend, <laughs> then you're a better man than me. Or maybe you're just so young that you haven't even discovered that part of yourself yet. But the weekend is insanely sexy. The haircut is on point. The acting is top of the notch. And it's just, it's the best show. I can't wait for season two, and it's only three episodes into season one. I, I read some headline from him that he said he was almost, like, messed up a little coming out of shooting because he was so deep into this character um, that he, he was having a hard time, like, returning to being able to be the weekend singer. And what's been great is watching him do press and being like, guys, the thing that makes the show so great is this character is the opposite of me. You're like, no, it's not weekend. <laughs> okay, that's you. You're not even trying to act. You didn't know there were cameras there. It is amazing. Don't let people tell you it's a bad show. It's mm -hmm. a great show. And if you want to know what I'm like when I flirt with people, that's what I'm like. I'm like Weekend. Mm. Watch Weekend Show. <laughs> Aaron, are you going to watch it? Did I, did I sell you on it? I mean, 
can I leave now and go watch it? You can. Okay. This you, you can leave right now. <laughs> it kind of reminds me of a a little bit of a trailer that was released just today, which I I haven't seen the movie yet. Obviously, it's not out yet, uh, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be the greatest movie of 2023. It's called Challengers, starring Zendaya. Have you, have you heard of this? Okay, I only saw. I just saw a thing on Twitter where it's like it, I, they just say they released the, the the trailer, and then it's like people being like Tom Holland must be so upset. So I don't. I assume it's a sexy movie. It's like a romantic comedy mm -hmm. um, where she plays a world famous tennis star, like the number two player in the world, and these two guys who I think also play tennis are like vying for her attention and love, and that's great. Um, but it's really the tennis scenes that are going to make it go to the next level. If you want to see uh, just a forehand out of outer space, check out Zendaya. Um, it, her serve, just everything about it. It's kind of like Raging Bull when they first put the camera into the ring and it was like, oh, that's so realistic. It just makes you feel like you're there. That's, that's Zendaya taking a wind up for a forehand. Just could not be just more more realistic. Let me ask you this question about <laughs> challengers. Is the weekend in it? <laughs> Cuz if he's not, then I'm not going to see a kids movie. It's rated R. I, and I was either... shocked. I, I'm, I want to know why it's rated R. I think there's some some sex going on maybe. There's like a threesome thing going on. It's either for kids or the weekend's in it. <laughs> okay? Those are those are the two categories. And I'm not going to see a kids movie this summer. Is it coming out this summer? It is coming out in August. And I think you should, just to reward her, I mean, when Zendaya, she clearly was putting on, putting in work on the practice court. Mm -hmm. I mean, when she's all arms and legs, she might just go pro after this because it, it really looks, it really looks like she's ready to do it. Do you remember the movie Wimbledon? Yeah. Before you ask Aaron, no, The weekend's not in it. It's a kid's movie. Kirsten Dunst. Kirsten Dunst and Paul Bettany. And I heard that when they were filming the movie, they had like the crowd in there and neither of them can play tennis for shit. So they're trying to like go back and forth and just get like one or two shots they can use. And that if they ever did anything right, the audience who's paid to be there would clap sarcastically because they were so bad at tennis. Like Paul Bettany like smokes a pack a day. He's not fucking playing tennis. That I've never seen that movie. Mm. But I, uh, I will never see a movie about tennis unless what? The weekends. The weekends in it. Tell me, if listen, if you want to make some money, right? The Flash just bombed. Movies are, are bombing left and right. <laughs> you want to make some money on a movie? You got to do one thing and one thing only. Put the weekend in it. <laughs> Put the weekend in your movie. Everyone's coming opening day. They're all gonna try to get into the same show. Because they don't want everyone else knowing what's happening to the weekend while they're sitting in the movies. Hmm. So, the weekend. <laughs> Give him. If if your mom used to beat you, tell the weekend about it. He's got something for you. I don't want to spoil too much for people. Okay, yeah, that's too much. I don't want to spoil anything for you. But if your mom abused you, tell the weekend. That's all I'll say. All right, I'm taking a, a long flight tomorrow. Mm -hmm. It's like 11 hours. I'll be sitting next to my kids on it. This is the perfect show to watch <laughs> on an airplane with your kids. Okay, great. Yeah. They're going to be they're going to have questions. They're going to be like, "Hey, have, have they had sex ed yet?" I think Ellis fifth grade, they started a little bit, you know. Okay, then Ellis might know who the weekend is. Walker's going to be like, "Who's that guy?" And like, that's the I can't feel my face guy. <laughs> Uh, he did do the Super Bowl, so maybe they know him from that. That's, but, uh, the, that's yeah. the only Does, Super Bowl sh halftime show for adults. Have you heard, um, they actually might, starting next year, replace those sex ed videos just with episodes of The Idol? They should. They, or even just the audio alone would be fine. Or just play some weekend music, <laughs> and they'll, they'll know everything. Wait, I want to circle back to Stanford, it's a, if it's okay, if we're, sure. if, we're, if we're done with the weekend. Um, sure. what, you met the parents. I met the I met the mom. How'd it go? Yeah, it was great. Oh yeah, that's right. It was cool. Yeah, which went. To, I took him to lunch, hung out at the sister's house one day. It was like it was the, when the fires were happening, the Canadian fires. So it was like it was so smoky. And there was one entire day. Like we were in the city one night in New York, and then went up to Stanford, and like I just missed the smoke in New York, and then it was like really bad when it was like really yellow. And then the next day, it was like, we didn't leave the hotel. We had to just stay put because you couldn't go outside. Hmm. It was so gross. Grossest I've ever seen. 
fuck those Canadian fires. You're lucky. You're lucky the weekend's from America. Is he? Aaron, is that right? Yeah. He's not Canadian. No. Okay. Congratulations, weekend. He's ours. Stars and Stripes. Independent. Like the weekend. Anything else happened to you? Uh, no. I was uh, Massachusetts. Kind of a bummer. My More than kind of a bummer. Uh, my parents had got COVID like right before we got there. So COVID. Oh, fuck. He's Canadian. <laughs> Yeah, no, I knew he was Canadian. I thought you were trying to so do that's, something that's there. That's how good an actor he is. Gosh. You don't know where he's from. The weekend's passport just says the weekend. Sometimes Aaron's humor is operating at a level I don't totally understand, so I thought it was some bit that he wasn't Canadian, but everyone knows him um, as the most famous Canadian since Dan Aykroyd. Of all of the uh, musical stars we have today, he is the best at hockey. <laughs> uh yeah so I was, so I was on martha's vineyard but yeah the parents had got covid still messing up vacations in the year 2023 so i couldn't really uh see them the whole time i mean we like saw them a little bit outside at, at their house and stuff but uh it was it was a dean my brother and karen uh type of week uh the kids got a lot of good aunt and uncle time but it was fun why don't you guys just watch the weekend watch the watch the weekend why don't you guys watch the idol together um, we did on FaceTime. Mm -hmm. uh, everyone got into their separate houses because obviously, you know, COVID, we wanted to make sure that the kids were safe. Um, but we got around as a family, put it on. And it was tricky because there's like a little bit of a lag with FaceTime. So it was like we're trying to start at the exact same time because mm -hmm. we want to, when it gets sexy, we want to all be there mm -hmm. um, reaching the pinnacle at the same time, you know, in a scene. And it was great. Yeah, everyone enjoyed it. That's great. That's great. Here's my impression of your mom watching The Idol. Oh, I know that man. He's so nice. I see him all the time. He comes by. I love him. He, what is that? What's his name? The Weekday? <laughs> the Weekend? Oh, he's great. He's sexy. Your, um, your goddaughter, Ellis, also graduated uh, elementary school. They don't call it graduation when it's elementary school, but she was there for six years, and so... It was, um, it was very tough. So she's going into seventh grade next she's year? She's going into middle school, which will be sixth grade. Okay. So she was K through five, and they all did this thing. You know, you saw them in this school for, for six years. It was very, very And then emotional. it's six, seven, eight in the next school, and yeah. then go into high school? In high school. Cool. It's all happening. Awesome. Congratulations, Ellis. That's great. And now it's time for Did We Get Any Notes? Did We Get Any Notes? <laughs> Yeah, we did. Uh, first of all, before I get into that, it's I don't want to get heavy, but we got to get heavy. Uh, we got some gifts in the past two weeks. We got from Brian Bayawachi. Bayawachi? Carl and Kenny, A Tale of Two Kidneys. It seems like Brian had some experience with kidney donation, wrote a book about two kids who donate kidneys. It's illustrated by Eminent System, if that floats your boat. Thank you, Brian. Congrats on the book. Then I got a letter from a JRVP longtime listener, Harrison. Harrison said, thank you for all the book recommendations. I want to send you a couple of my favorites. This is Survivor by Chuck Palahniuk, the author of Fight Club. I have read Survivor. It's great. This I'm very excited about. Mean Business on North Ganson Street by my friend S. Craig Zoller. If you've seen Bone Tomahawk, if you've seen Dragged Across Concrete, if you have seen... What's his other one he did? Ah, oh, fuck, I forget it. But anyway, S. Craig Zoller, great director, great writer. I can't wait to read that book. And then finally, this is through uh, the Aaron connection, Nick DeSemelin's The Last Action Heroes, a history of Schwarzenegger, Dolph Lundgren, Van Damme, Stallone. It sounds great. Aaron, you're halfway through? I'm about a third of the way, and it's, it's great. Yeah, I can't wait. This, yeah. is, this is amazing. I'm going to read this and send it to my brother. Thank you for sending me an advanced copy. Thank you to all our fans, and thank you in advance for the uh, woodworking that I told you to do. Second note, uh, we got a little argument today with the boss here at All Things Comedy. Greg and I come in today. We're excited. We've had a couple weeks off. You know, we, we had a pre-taped episode. We took a week off, and then we come back in. And Greg and I get into the office today. We're riding up the escalator. And who's coming down the other escalator? Of course. It's Burr. It's Billy. It's Billy Burr. 
Greg and I are excited to see him. We don't see Bill that often. We haven't seen him in a couple weeks. We're like, hey, Billy, what's up? And he goes, I don't know, guys, what's up? In like a really aggressive way. A really aggressive way. Very Boston. Yeah, extremely Boston. And we're talking about Bill Burr, a guy who became like less aggressive somehow once he shaved his head. That's the kind of person we're dealing with. <laughs> so he, we're like, he, I'm like, is there a problem, Bill? And he goes, I don't know. Is there a problem with paperwork? And we're like, what are you talking about? Greg and I don't understand. And he's like, if you're going to take a day off the podcast, you got to fill out the proper paperwork. And we're like, we don't know what you mean. He goes, I know you don't know what I mean because I'm going through the paperwork right now and I don't see a slip that says you guys are taking off the episode. We're like, hey, we talked to Rebecca. We talked to other people here. Aaron knew we weren't doing it. Yep. And he's like, that's not what the paperwork's for. The paperwork's for me. So I can rest easy knowing what the schedule's going to be for the podcast. You know, Bill's got the board in his office right. where he moves around what's going on, what's recording. He's always changing it around. And I didn't know. I mean, I, saw, I said, I think it's Aaron's fault. That's and, always my fancy. And yeah. Bill said, that's interesting. Tell me why. And I said, Aaron didn't give us the paperwork. He didn't say, hey, fill this out, put it underneath Bill's office door, and so Bill knows we're taking the episode off. Is that right, Aaron? I mean, we didn't miss a week, so I didn't feel like that there was a need. But we did miss a week. But Well, there was a week, a week off um, that was in there. We, we skipped a week. We had a mailbag and then a week um, off. And now, now that we've learned more about it, it does make sense why, why he's upset. You, you get those, it's kind of like a waiter... Um, pad where there's multiple copies that has the carbon underneath so you write on the top all the paperwork that you're going to miss the episode you you rip off the top one you can keep that for yourself the bottom carbon paper that that's for bill mm -hmm. yeah and bill like i mean he likes to get them all and then he likes to do the tearing and separating but he was i mean he, I've, i haven't seen him that mad since we all found out Whitney Cummings is pregnant. <laughs> I haven't seen him really, like, really lose it like that. Where, I don't know. I don't know, but I think we're good now. Right. Like, I think we're okay. Aaron, what do you think? Yeah, yeah, probably just a verbal warning the first time. Yeah. I mean, I feel like we've gotten a lot of first-time verbal warnings. Right. When is it? When do you think it gets physical? Probably next time. Yeah. Okay, that's what he said, too. He said, next time it's physical. <laughs> well, when, um, when do you think like, he'll um, forgive Whitney? That's, that's a bigger question. I don't know. I don't know. I just remember Bill just kept si screaming, if I find the guy who did it to her. <laughs> he kept saying that. If I find the guy who did it to her. And then not finishing the sentence. I thank God. I mean, if, maybe if it wasn't for Whitney, we may have gotten fired. We might not be doing a podcast right now. Luckily, that distracted him enough. He's just, I don't know. He's into it. And that was. Did we get any notes? Did we get any notes? Notes. 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 Did we get any notes? Notes. Notes. Did we get any notes? Now it's time to take it down to a special place where there is no paperwork. It's Email Corner. Guys, emails are a thing. Don't let anyone tell you different. There's conspiracy theories out there that emails aren't a thing. Don't listen to them. They're small time. Emails, they are a thing. It's a fact. Emails, we get sent them. We get sent them to us. We <laughs> compile. We put them down. Greg reads them out. We answer your questions. JRVP Junior Vice President at gmail.com. Greg. All right, first email is from Andrew. Uh, he says, hey, guys, I have a pretty urgent problem. My girlfriend is perfect, but we have one huge point of conflict, dancing. Her brother's wedding is next month. I know she's going to want me to dance at the reception. I just know that even if I explain this issue to her in advance, she's on board with me not dancing. She's going to have two cocktails, start making a scene about me not wanting to dance. I know how bad uh, upsetting her in front of her entire family could go but I truly can't bring myself to do any kind of dancing. Drinking makes me groggy and sleepy, and marijuana doesn't do much more. 
I'm dreading this so badly that I even have contemplated faking getting COVID to avoid it. Please help me out, guys. I'm glad you came to us. This is great. Okay. Stop thinking about it in terms of like you don't want to dance. That's how everyone's looking at this. Your girlfriend's like, oh, he doesn't want to dance. He doesn't want to dance with me. The family's like, why doesn't he want to dance? Why doesn't he get involved? It's not that you don't want to dance, bro. You don't dance. You don't dance. Say it with me. I, I don't, don't dance. dance. You don't. I don't. You can't. I can't. Yep. You do not do it. Won't do it. Dancing. Not even I not even the don't the weekend. dance. <laughs> Look, when you don't dance, you just, pretend you just can't. Pretend your ankles are fused or some shit. You can't do it. That makes everything a little bit easier. If your girlfriend really needs you, it's like, hey, the, the whole wedding's gone by just for one song. Then just go stand there and sway side to side while she dances. Do it for her, maybe one at the end, but you do not dance. You just are not capable. Hmm. So then, therefore, it just makes everything way easier. Just don't do it. Just relax about it. Everyone's, everyone's trying to get you on the dance floor. Just kind of smile and, like, and wave and then like, go hit the bathroom. You know, go up to the bar and stand there and talk to somebody. Like, wedding, stay, stay busy, but don't worry about not getting... I don't get in the dance floor at weddings. I don't dance. Uh, neither do I, and uh, I really love your answer because uh, my first reaction was um, he needs to break up with her. It's too big to overcome. But she's perfect. But make, her making him want to dance, that's not perfect. Listen, unless you're the weekend, you can't afford to be going through a breakup right now. Not a month before the brother's wedding. Um, Unless you're the weekend. I uh, I think she would accept it. I mean, you're right in terms of just kind of stand and like slightly move, like bob your head. That's that's a move. But I feel I feel that pain. I have danced at weddings, um, but at this point, it's not really happening too much. I was just at a wedding last weekend. Uh, guy you know a little bit, Tom Worsley, our friend, our friend Gilly's old uh, roommate, Darcy's sure. old room, fr from Tulane. I, I went all the way to uh, Rhode Island on the way back. From Massachusetts, stopped at his wedding. Made my that was my uh, Father's Day present essentially, as my family came along uh, for an extra day on this trip so that we could uh, go to this wedding. But they didn't want to stay at the wedding long. We're flying the next day. It's raining, so I, I brought him back home and then went back to the wedding. And suddenly, I'm at, by myself at a wedding that I don't know anyone except for Tom. Gilly couldn't make it. Um, and they're playing music, and basically everyone at the wedding is now on the dance floor. And it's, it's, not, it's a tough situation for me. But there's always people who aren't on the dance floor. Go hang with them. There's going to be some That's older fair. people, some vets, you know, just hanging out on the side. Disabled. And then there's a part at the, tw at the very end of the wedding where everyone gets on no matter what. Make that your time. You know, then just show up and kind of stand next to your girlfriend and sway back and forth and let her feel like you came out on the dance floor. But yeah, you don't dance. Hmm. Aaron, you seem like a big, big time dancer. Like when I walked in here today, right before Greg got in, Aaron was dancing by himself, had his back to me and then saw me and got kind of scared for a second and then a little embarrassed and then laughed and then kept dancing. Aaron, are you, would you call yourself a dancer or? You know, I just feel it in my soul, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's your favorite dance? <sighs> Probably the Cupid Shuffle. Hmm. That's surprising because like most, mm -hmm. most of the time we walk in here, he's actually got um, that Ice Cube song, You Can Do It, Put Your Back Into It, just as loud as possible. And he's just, he's just breaking it down to that. Doing the Cupid Shuffle. <laughs> Why did you look at your computer like you had to read the lyrics? <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to get exactly uh, what the name of the song is. You Can Do It, Put Your Back Into It. That's how I know it. I think it's just called You Can Do It I by Ice so. Cube. What I, a song. I think so too. I think that's what it's called. <laughs> really nailed it. Our next uh, email is from Diego. Hey, crew. I posed this question recently at a wedding. Pretty de divisive. A lot of people immediately recoiled. Later came around to the fact they probably couldn't say no forever. Okay. Anyways. You offered $10,000 a day. Every day that you have sex with a dog. Same dog? There's a... Uh, can be different dogs or it can be the same one. It doesn't matter who offers it to you or why, but you know that it's legitimate and private. It doesn't have to be your dog, and you can't earn more money by multiple acts in a day. <laughs> you can also take days off if you want, but you won't get paid on those days. Do you ever have sex with a dog? Do you establish a cadence? 
do you save it to pay? And when he says cadence, does that mean with the dog or just? What does that? What does that mean? Well, I think it, in this context, I think it means like, do you do it three days a week? Do you do it like every Monday or Tuesday? But you could also read it as like. Uh, do you do it especially fast or slow? Um, do, you, do you go start off fast and then go slow um, if you want to you know, put your back into it? Uh, do you save it up for special vacations? Foster dogs uh, to keep new talent in the mix. Have one uh, really fucked up year to build a nest egg. These all have question marks. If you say absolutely not, keep in mind you're turning down $3.5 million annually. Wow. That's what $10,000 a day would be. Yeah. Uh, Aaron, what would you what would you do? Would you have sex with the dog every day, or would you not have sex with the dog at all, or something in between? I'm leaning. And remember, remember, Aaron, it can be any dog. You can have a, sex with a different dog every day. These are your seventy two virgins in heaven. <laughs> this doesn't feel like heaven. Do any of the dogs look like the weekend? <laughs> you know, there are dogs that could look like the weekend. I mean, you know? that changes the deal. It does. Certainly. What if a dog goes down on you in the back of a car? <laughs> I mean, while your friend drives. Um, so would okay. Ten, uh, seriously, ten grand. Anytime you do, it, would you would you try it once and see? Does does any? I mean, it's legit and it's private. But does anyone know? Does anyone else know that this happens? No, I don't think unless so. you tell them. Yeah, it yeah, said it said it's private. That. I don't know. That seems terrible. But again, like it's not a one-time decision. It's like you could be like, "No, I'm not doing that today." Well, and then it can the next be a one-time day, you're like, decision. Yeah. And then the next day, you're like, "Well, I could use ten grand." Mm. You know, college is expensive for my daughter. If every week me, we meet up and the two of you are wearing more and more gold chains and rings every <laughs> week, then I'm like, oh, "Well, maybe I'm sitting on something here." I like that it says. Um yeah, you, know, you you can take a day off if you want. It's like that dog is going to need a day off, not me. <laughs> certainly, certainly true. <laughs> like Greg, you can pick different dogs. You're like, nope, this dog. <laughs> this is they're the like, dog. You, you can't earn more by multiple acts in a day. Don't care, Greg. What do you? I, I'm still just going to rationalize that it's worth you know worth it. Uh, no, I um, I guess it depends on the desperation of um, the life uh, that you're living. If I'm going to answer it honestly, why wouldn't I? Something so serious. I think like earlier in my career, I, I would maybe have uh, considered it special occasions. Like when I need, it's like we're going to go take a trip, something like that. I think now I'm a little more, <laughs> excuse me, <laughs> financially comfortable. Um, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm more comfortable financially, like maybe during tax season. Uh, okay. Yeah. yeah. You have to make it a seasonal thing. Like right. I, yeah. Right it's before like, the holidays. It's like sudden, you know. Suddenly, it's like you know we're we're kind of contractors with this JRVP thing. Suddenly, get that tax bill. It's a lot. Let's mm -hmm. let's bring over old uh, Rufus. Yeah, I'm I'm kind of similar to Greg <laughs> so in that. Dog. <laughs> <laughs> it's got it's got to be male dog. <laughs> um, I think that I'm also like financially well off. That I don't need this money. Like, I could just be like, no, and it wouldn't phase me at all to not get 10 grand a day. But it seems like a waste. So what I would do is I would have sex with the dog every day and give the money to charity. <laughs> <laughs> I'd give the money to charity. Like, I'd pick it every day. It would be a different charity that would get the money. And that way, like, I could just get, you know, get things going. So I would have to tell people <laughs> in this situation and maybe like try to get something going, like live stream it, mm. me and the dog, so that people would give money. So that, like I'm not only am I giving ten grand to these charities, but they're getting money from people who want to support. Right. So it's like a it's a great thing I'm doing. That's that's amazing. You took what's kind of a dark question, and you're giving back. Mm -hmm. You know, not just to the dog, mm -hmm. but <laughs> <laughs> to the, to people as well. I got to think, like, do do the charities accept the money? <laughs> or are they just like, no? <laughs> PETA says, no, we won't take this. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, a, it's an interesting, like, PR uh, conundrum. If you brought that to your publicist and say, like, look, I really, uh, this is $3.5 million a year. I'm going to raise for childhood cancer research or, or whatever it's going to be. Here's how I'm going to do it. Um, it, it would uh, it would present a quandary for them. Here, here's my impression of me dropping off uh, the money every day to a different charity. Uh, here's ten thousand dollars for your charity. 
Oh, thank you very much. It's so generous. My pleasure. <laughs> Uh, all right, our last question um, asks about uh, marriage to his best friend. My best friend is married to a grade A bitch. I, I don't like I don't like the B word in that context. His his friends and family agree. I've confronted her. I've confronted him and the two of them together. Privately, my friend agrees with me, but he says he can't help loving her. His mom is kind of a bitch, too. What? <laughs> That's in parentheses. Uh, my question is, should I get rid of this friend that I've had for almost 20 years, try to see him on the sly, or try to live uh, with his wife as she is? You got to lose that friend. Listen, mm. we've all had friends who have married someone that nobody likes. And that's it's your friend's life. He loves this person. They have a different relationship. But he knew that by taking on this woman that he was getting rid of a lot of his friends because she's so unpleasant. We both know people who we were good friends with who married someone we did not like, and you try, you make an effort, and then eventually they, like, they become separate no matter what. Mm -hmm. That save yourself the time. Just If he reaches out to you, go have a beer, listen to him talk or whatever, but this isn't your friend anymore. He made a choice. He's gone now. He's <laughs> gone. Why? Why not? I would say wait it out, you know? Wait it out. Wait out what? A divorce? This Maybe. Is, th these things don't change. But here's the thing. Hang, you don't need to hang out with uh, your friend's wife. It's overrated. And it's only like uh, early on in a marriage that that's going to be happening a lot. Anyways, at some point that'll just stop. Because the wife isn't going to want to hang out with you. You don't want to hang out with them. So just hang out with your friend when you can. It's not going to be all the time, but uh, that's fine. But then you spend your time, he's complaining about his wife, and you can't say anything. Because it's like, hey, motherfucker, I told you. This is why we don't hang out more. It becomes annoying. Like, eventually, you are going to be estranged friends. Why hmm. not just, just know in advance this is where it's going and meet him there? I am surprised that he says, I've confronted her, I've confronted them and the two of them together. I mean, that's not going to work. We've all had friends who maybe were getting into a marriage or a relationship and you've had your doubts. Like, never bring up those doubts early. Yeah. I mean, if it's incredibly early, you could consider it if it was a serious problem. But it's kind of like when your kid is coming up with your friend who's coming up with like baby names, never shit on it because no. it might be the one they pick. Sure. And it might turn into his wife and then it's like, you're screwed. So just but we've had friends who have been like, I'm getting married, I'm, I'm thinking about getting married and we're like, please don't. And they're like, okay, and we have conversations. We really like are nice about it and talk them down. And the next day is like, I got the ring. And you're like, what do you, what the fuck? But that was, that's younger. That's when you're sure. younger. I, I think assume I, this guy's younger the way he's talking. Right. With age, I've said, don't even, but you've already confronted it. I guess it's just her behavior you don't like. But I, I think as you get older, the what hanging out with the wives kind of goes away. Not for everyone, not for every relationship. If you get along with the wives, it's great, but there's only so much time in the day. I can't remember the last time Emika saw any of my friends. No. I see Emika sometimes, but I wouldn't spit in her face if her nose was on fire. It's terrible. But Greg and I are still friends. It's terrible. I would never spit in your it's wife's not face. True. Aaron. Yeah. What'd you do? I feel like he's talking about you. No, 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 no. That's not possible. Okay. I've not I have known anybody for twenty years. No. Um I would I think try to see him try to see him on the sly. You, yeah. What or does even that even mean on the sly? Wait, you can't say I'm hanging out with my friend? Yeah, I don't, I, that, that on the sly shit, it's weird. You're not having an affair. If she's that bad that you can't hang out with your friend unless it's a secret, then you, he's not your friend. Lose him. Start a podcast with someone else. It'll all work out. <laughs> and that was Email Corner. Emails are a thing. Unite. Time for ad copy. So, we've all been there. Well, Anthony hasn't. Your girlfriend dropping hints. She wants a ring. Or nope. boyfriend. However it works. But you don't even know uh, where to start. Uh, and you can't keep buying yourself time by saying, let's go watch The Idol. You know what I mean? Like, that's only going to last so long. You'd be surprised. <laughs> Thankfully, jamesallen.com is making buying the perfect engagement ring a lot easier. jamesallen.com is the online destination for designing a customized engagement ring she'll love more easily than you ever thought possible and saving up to 50% compared 
to traditional stores. This was very stressful uh, to me uh, when I was considering uh, asking Emika to marry me. Didn't you just hand her some piece of shit out of your grandma's grave? I mean, that's not true. I bought a $50 ring and just decided to give her that as a placeholder. Because I was like, why don't you go pick the ring? Um, not, I mean, it, was, it worked out for us, but with jamesallen.com, you avoid the whole pressurized situation with salespeople going into the store. There's certain sorts of jewelry stores, and I felt this way when we got, and we loved our ring, but it's such a nice store, and you get all this service, or you make like an appointment. It's like you almost feel like you have to buy the ring, and it's too, it's too big of a decision that you feel pressured with the salesperson, and they're very good at what they do. JamesAllen.com uh, helps you avoid all that. You can look at it online. Take your time. Let me put this in a way that our listeners and our viewers can understand. Are you the weekend? No? Nope, I'm not. And you want someone to marry you? You better go to this place and get a fucking ring. You need to convince this woman or this guy to marry you unless you're the weekend. You want to fool someone into thinking you're the weekend for the rest of your life? <laughs> you better go to James Allen. JamesAllen.com. Uh, 200,000 certified conflict-free diamonds. They've got both earth-created and lab-created. When you pick your diamond, you can see it magnified a 360-degree view. I checked out the website, JamesAllen.com. It is all sorts of cool. Seriously, you could walk into a jewelry store, look at their diamonds under a magnifying glass. You wouldn't see it as close a look as you get on jamesallen.com. Jamesallen.com also has an augmented reality ring try-on, so you can see what it looks like on your hand. They have real-time diamond consultants with non-commissioned experts who can walk you through the process. Lifetime warranty, free resizing and engraving, hassle-free, 30 free uh, 30 day returns. What, what's, what's got you going? Just, you just started, you got fired up all of a sudden. I, I, I wish jamesallen.com was around uh, back I when. wish James Allen was my dad. jamesallen.com is where you can get 25% off your order. Go to jamesallen.com. Use the code JRVP. They've already been part of over 200,000 engagements all over the world. Is yours next? That's code JRVP at jamesallen.com for 25% off. James Allen. Dot com. Use the code JRVP, 25% off. Stitch Fix is back for summer. Stitch Fix. I've been wearing my Stitch Fix all around the country. I brought my Stitch Fix shirt. I brought my Stitch Fix jeans to uh, Massachusetts last week. They fit great. They look great. Uh, and I didn't have to choose them. You uh, go to stitchfix.com and you fill out a survey. They have a lot of questions about your size. You don't just say like, oh, I'm small. They have a couple different questions which really makes it fit well. That's what I've learned as I get older. It's basically just all about the fit. If your clothes fit well, Anthony, you're gonna like them. It's true, but you can go in there and just say I'm small. <laughs> I mean, you can. I'm just saying uh, they've got over a thousand brands and styles that you know and you love. All you have to do, you answer those questions about where you typically get your clothes, like what you like to wear, and your price range. So if you want to spend a lot of money, Stitch Fix is there for you. They will get you the nicest stuff. If you want to uh, be way more affordable, on the low end, you don't have much money to spend at all, they'll make it look cool. Uh, they'll make sure it fits you, uh, and it, you can get it for cheap. Try StitchFix.com today at StitchFix dot com slash jrvp you'll get 25 percent off when you keep everything in your fix that's stitchfix.com for 25 percent off today stitchfix.com slash jrvp stitchfix.com slash jrvp i really like those jeans i got too and the shoes you get shoes you get jeans you get shirts you get the whole gamut you also get a uh, healthy when you try AG1. 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 Yo, I've been living off those travel packs. I heard a new shipment is coming. Shout out to AG1. We need it. We, we've gotten so used to it as our daily habit uh, in the Rosenthal house that we went to uh, Massachusetts with about 20 uh, travel packs. AG1 is the daily foundational, foundational nutrition supplement that supports whole body health. I drink it literally every day. So does Emika, my wife. So does Anthony. I gave AG1 a try uh, because I wanted to improve my gut health. I do it first thing in the morning or I do it right after I work out. I don't know why. I just feel like that's a good time to drink it. I'm a first thing in the morning man. Makes my nails strong. Makes my hair look good. Makes my skin glow. 
makes me feel like I'm giving the body, my body, the nutrition uh, that it craves. 75 vitamins, minerals, probiotics, whole food sourced ingredients of high quality. If you want to take ownership of your health, try AG1. Get a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com slash JRVP. That's drinkag1.com slash JRVP. Drinkag1.com slash JRVP. Check it out. And that was Ad Copy. Let's get to headlines. Let's get to headlines. We got some bangers. We got some bangers this week. We take a couple weeks off. We're getting bangers when we come back. <laughs> we do. I the first one I think is my favorite. Yes, um, it's about a long time Penn State professor, a popular Penn State professor. Right. Remember when I was uh, stepping on my dick at the intro to this whole uh, exercise? Oh, you were stomping on your. It dick. was because I was so excited about this professor. I couldn't wait to talk about him. Uh, he was arrested recently. Um, he was at a state park. And he was arrested after trail camera footage showed the man having sex with his dog. The 64-year-old chemical engineering professor, when caught, told the police, I just do it to blow off steam. Okay. This is great on every single level. And a lot of details Greg left out. Well, yeah. I've read the story. So this guy likes to have sex with his dog. What kind of dog does he have? I'm so glad you asked. He's got a lassie dog. He's got a collie, it, the dog that looks like Lassie, all right? Yeah, you if remember you, I used to have a, a Shetland sheep dog, which is like the smaller version of the mm-hmm. collie. Beautiful yeah. dogs. Yeah. So beautiful. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> ideal physically. If you had to like pick a dog to make your mate, you know, not just like a one-off sex time, but like this is, I'm, we're together now. We're going public with this. You want a border collie. You want a Lassie. They are beautiful dogs mm-hmm. in a way that you're like, that could be a woman in a pinch. Right? That's a $10,000 a day, I'm not switching out dogs mm-hmm. type of dog. That's a, oh, I get money too? That's that kind of thing. <laughs> so he's got this dog. He, he bought this dog knowing one day we'll make love. He brings it, he has a home. He brings the dog into a public trail. That's how he got caught. He went off, like he, went, he took his dog hiking, went off a trail. They can see him. They have cameras all over the fucking woods or wherever it is. And they can see him having sex with the dog. He's trying to set up an iPad and film it. He's obviously given this to his other like weird animal sex people, but he couldn't figure out how to do the iPad. So he just had sex with the dog and then comes back and the trail people. Well, how do you know he couldn't have, he couldn't figure out the iPad? They said, he, was, they said he attempted to film it himself uh, and then like it didn't work out. So then he has sex with the dog, goes home and the next day the cops come. Like the park rangers see it and like report him. They're like, we know who this is. This is it's, it's easy to figure out with the border call and everything. They show up and he immediately knows he's busted. They're like, we need to search your house. And he knows he's done. So to panic, to panic and go, I was just doing it to blow off steam is so funny. <laughs> it's so funny that because you know, like, I'm screwed. I'm going to jail now for having sex with my dog. My career is over. My career is over. Probably. Penn State, eh, they, can, they might let you back. They might build him a statue. Um, to start, to start <laughs> arguing with the cops, uh, I think at one point he asked them just to kill him. Yep. Yeah, why don't you just kill me? That's where it got a little sadder. The blowing off steam, funny. Funny. Um, please kill me. I'm looking for the exact quote, but yeah, he said basically he was dead. He is now dead. Just kill me. Yeah, please kill me. My life is over. I'm cops, done. I'm dead. You don't understand. I need to die. I think the cops are like, we get it. <laughs> we understand that you've gotten caught having sex with a dog. We know how to film of it, and we are going to send you to jail. But the cops must have laughed right in his face. Because there are people who are like, oh, please kill me. And it's like a little more sad. Or like, uh, are we armed going into this house? They were not afraid of this guy. They were just like, we're going to take your pictures of you and dogs having sex. And we're taking you to jail. That him laying on the ground going, kill me, kill me, is hilarious. No, you're going to tell your mom and dad what you did. You had sex with your dog. And it's a lassie dog. Well, you know. 
You got an update for me? No. Um, I was just going to say, you know, the good news for him is his mom and dad probably are, are dead. He's 64 years old, so he won't have to live with that sort of shame. They're up in, they're up in heaven looking down, being like, oh, no, Giuseppe. <sighs> yeah. Um, his name, Temis uh, Mastukas, chemical engineer. You can't, you can't trust those chemical engineering guys. It's like, really? You, you find it that interesting? All really? that studying? Engineering and chemicals? <laughs> Take a walk, you fucking perv. Um, and I wish, I wish I had asked uh, for this picture um, to be up there because he, he's better looking than you think. Oh, I thought you were going to do the thing. You no, did. I mean, I'll, I'll show it to you just so that you can see him. And, and our people on YouTube could see a little tiny picture of him. But, I mean, he's a good-looking older man, I would mm, say. I don't know. He's got a little... Tony Jeselnik to him. A little Tony Jeselnik to him, but like if Tony, if my dad had sex with dogs, he would look like that guy. That's the only difference between the two. I mean, my dad's a little older, but that guy looks like he's got some warmth behind those eyes. He needs to, he needs to see his last dog. Well, it it's very strange to me because he actually, so he he was nude from the waist down except for socks and shoes, but he did have a mask on and a backpack, so like. That's so he can take the video and then send it to people so that, without getting caught. Oh, okay. So I was like, because wearing the ski mask, you know, that's would so, indicate... So the dog that, doesn't know. The dog can't finger him in a lineup. It's a, tough, it's a tough situation. I feel like if you see someone with a lassie dog, ask them if they're having sex with it. <laughs> you know? why? I don't understand another reason you'd have it. Unless you live near a well. <laughs> They said he's been rele relieved of his responsibilities and is on leave, which actually makes it sound like he hasn't been officially fired. It's like tenure. Am I right? Yeah. I mean, once you lock that in. I would sound, I, I'd be like, listen, I'm an English major, but I would love to take this class. Right. I've got questions. He's like, so the chemical bonding happens at 37 degrees Celsius. He's like, excuse me, a professor, what's up with having sex with dogs? You fucking goof. Uh, he won the Premier Teaching Award from the Penn State Engineering Alumni Society in 2017. He's been there since 1991, a published author of several books. You know what he didn't win? <laughs> dad Dog of the Year. Dog Dad? Dog Dad of the Year. Dog Dad of the Year or Johnny Crime. Like, <laughs> to get busted doing this is so bad. Like, he could have just done this at home and never gotten caught. But he had to go to a public park, not knowing about the cameras. It's well, the only reason fun. that, yeah, there was even uh, cameras up was apparently the people at the same place, people were breaking into cars and uh, mm. they had cameras set up to, to, and then they just noticed the guy banging his dog on it. Listen, imagine being a dog because like my dog, if I, if I put my shoes on, my dog gets so happy. If I call the car at the valet, my dog's like, oh my God, we're going for a hike. He's so happy. He's so psyched. And then sometimes it's like, oh no, we're going to the vet and he gets really mad. The, the dog being so pumped to go for a hike and then being like, oh, he's got the mask. <laughs> oh, I'm not going on a hike. <laughs> I'm getting fucked. <laughs> I really like the idea of a dog. <laughs> All, exci all excited loud. for the walk. Oh, I'm not going for a hike. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting fucked. <laughs> is is very funny to me. All right, let's lighten it up with some 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 more fun stories. Okay, uh, this is about a uh, a former manager at uh, the Harvard University morgue, recently uh, relieved of his duties after uh, being indicted last week of being accused of stealing brains, heads skin and bones to sell on Facebook, according to the indictment. Facebook Marketplace is great. You can get whatever you want. Um, have you seen a picture of the guy? Yeah, he's not better looking than you'd think. No, he looks exactly like you think he would look based on his crimes. He's got like a half a face tattoo. He's got like, a, like a, half of his face is tattooed. He's an older gentleman. I guarantee being the, mor running the, being the manager of the morgue at Harvard University is like the best morgue job you can get. I think he must have been bragging to everyone. He must have been psyched about this job. Top of the food chain. He got, he got cocky. All right. Everyone who works at a morgue sells parts of the bodies. Everyone. So to get caught, you have to be really egregious by going on Facebook Marketplace. You could have gone on Instagram Marketplace. You'd still be, still be out there wandering around selling bodies. 
this guy brought his girlfriend into it into the yeah his girlfriend was also uh arrested and three other people that helped it but the girlfriend had a pretty long criminal record and yeah she was kind of uh, see it almost felt like he was the middleman uh for his girlfriend who was selling it all over the place i absolutely believe it he got he got he got pussy whipped a little bit Ooh. 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 he got a little uh he got a little cunt struck and started doing whatever she wanted. I like the, the the stories about them getting like having parties where they'd have people come over and figure out which body they want. They would they would put funny things in the like what are you shipping thing when they would ship it FedEx. It would be like brains when they were well, shipping that was, head. Yeah, that was it's it, great. One transaction, uh, the way they caught them um, partly was they sold. You know, they were shipping the remains to others. Now, at this point, it it was all these bodies and body parts that were donated to science. Mm -hmm. They were used by harvard and their students and then at some point they're done with them and they're supposed to just be cremated and it was at that point where he starts selling them off and he sold it to one lady katrina mclean who owns a store which is still open cat's creepy creations check it out peabody mass it's also got a website i, I found it um and she s was selling um dissected faces uh she bought them for about six hundred dollars then she marks it up i mean that's just the business uh and yeah she also bought uh some brains and yeah the memo i think it was on venmo or something and the yeah the memo was just brains which is that's a dead giveaway mm -hmm. don't write brains mm -hmm. be like baseball fee you yeah. know it's like when i remember we had friends who would try <laughs> to send weed to themselves like they go to california buy a bunch of weed and then send it to their friends at college and they i remember one guy got busted because he he wrote like from Dr. Good Buzz to, and then we're just like, it went, it went like one city over and the FedEx was like, we're taking this. We're taking this and smoking it. Um, I like that they would ask for skin and they would make leather out of the skin. Yeah. Like these, I love the stores like that. Those oddity stores that have like weird shit in them. I love going in those places and I guarantee all of them have some weird illegal shit in the back. Mm. Uh, I hope this guy doesn't go to jail. Hmm. It's nice of you. Yeah. Will this change your opinion uh, among the remains that his wife stole uh, and sold were the corpses of two stillborn babies that were supposed to have been cremated and returned to their families does this change my mind of something bad should happen to them well i'm just saying yeah shouldn't you go to jail for taking corpses of stillborn babies that were supposed to go back to the, the family this is one of those things that yeah it's bad to do but I think it's just as bad, if not worse, to tell them about it. Do you know what I mean? Like, if you're the cops and you find out this happened, if you go tell the, the family, hey, those kids you thought were being, uh, were being turned to ash are actually, were actually stolen, you're fucking with them. They think their kids are ashes. They don't know. Don't tell them anything. Mm. It's bad. They should be punished for it. But don't tell the families because then it's like you're reopening a wound. You know, if someone makes a joke... It's not really answering the question. If someone makes a joke, it's bad to make that joke. Whatever. I make that joke all the time. If you run and tell someone that I made that joke, then you're the asshole. It's fair. The, uh, the lawyer um, defending uh, the wife, who's really taken a lot of the heat, uh, was quoted saying, Before we start jumping to conclusions about what was going on, we need to let this play out in the court system. That's when you know your lawyer doesn't have anything. Nothing. They just say, we need to let this play out in the court system. I'd love to know what they, what they could unearth that people would be like, oh, okay, let them go. Nothing. It, when you're with dead bodies, you can either have sex with them or you can sell them. But you better not get caught. That's the JIVP promise. This is a Christy Smith uh, recommendation, by the way. Mm. She sent me the story. What if they sold them in like the metaverse? That could be a way to get that going. Greg is, uh, Aaron, how many times a day does Greg bring up the metaverse? <laughs> I mean, He's always like, what if we do it in the metaverse? What if I'm, when I'm in Japan, we get do this podcast in the metaverse? I'm sick of it. Yeah. Next story. Play a song. <laughs> Wait, Christy recommending a uh, headline actually reminded me, our friend Aaron over there uh, had an idea for a headline to do. Ooh. So this is not an official headline, but you're wearing that pirate's hat. Yeah. And so I thought, well, you know, we have time. Let's do it. I don't have any friends named Aaron. It's our last, uh, <laughs> it's our last show in person for a month. So uh, let's hear it, Aaron. Bus driver transporting Pittsburgh pirates charged with DUI. Mm. So uh, pirates are playing who? 
They had just finished playing Chicago they're in Chicago. They're playing the Cubs at Wrigley, and yes. they're, they're leaving the park. They were leaving the park to drive to Milwaukee, which is two hours. So they chartered a local uh, bus with its, with its own bus driver, and he was stopped uh, still within the city limits of Chicago. Uh, he had broken off from the police escort they had set up for them. Mm. He was not following them, so they're like, something's up. They pulled him over. He failed the DUI test, and he is uh, under arrest. I wonder if this is less embarrassing for the Pirates organization than if it was like their normal bus driver. Yeah, of course. You know? yeah. I didn't realize they hired a guy to do this. And I wonder if the players on the bus were like, what the fuck's going on? Or did they not know until they got pulled over? The police said the driver was arrested after they observed multiple signs of impairment, um, which, sho- which shocks me. Because when I think of the Pittsburgh Pirates, I think first-class organization. I think no expense spared. Everything top shelf. The best drivers, the best players, the best facilities. It, money is no object to the Pittsburgh Pirates. They're, they're going to make sure they get the best of the best. So of all teams, very surprising. Let me tell you something about the Pittsburgh Pirates, all right? <laughs> the most beloved owner in sports by a mile, all right? Everyone loves this guy. Secondly, they're the Pirates. They don't have money to pay the players because it's buried all around. I don't want to hear this argument ever again. Secondly, sometimes when you're playing the Chicago Bears... And you've had a big game. You know, you're tired from losing the entire series. You say, you know what? Why not let Bob Huggins drive the team? <laughs> uh, people do have to c- catch out uh, on the, uh, the YouTube channel this week just to see Anthony's ice glare as I was talking about the Pirates. I, I appreciated that. Thank you, Aaron. Um, now we'll go to uh, the regularly scheduled uh, third headline here, um, which is about a guy who I think a lot of us could identify with. Um, it's like if you've ever had an hourly job and you have an exact time you're going to get off, and sometimes you're just staring at the clock, you're waiting for the shift to be over, looking uh, for anything to kind of offer you the sweet relief of, li- of leaving, like when you were at Borders. Uh, A a Tulsa gas station clerk came up with the perfect solution. He asked a friend to rob the store for him so he can go home early. Uh, I mean, this is great because everyone's thought of this. Maybe not at a job. Maybe not at a job like, hey, come and rob the place. But I guarantee, and Aaron, back me up on this. You're taking a test in college. You're not prepared. You think, wouldn't it be great if I sat down to take this test and someone pulled the fire alarm? Yeah. And I got to get up and leave, and I didn't have to take it. You dreamed of that. Something Same. that would get you out of it. Literally saved by the bell. Never done it, but always like dreamed about it as if I really needed to. That was, Did he think that they would close the store and he'd get to go home? <laughs> Wouldn't yeah. he have to be there longer yeah, if I he got think, robbed? I would think so, yeah. I was confused. Like I didn't know if that's a gas station rule. It's like, hey, you're robbed. robbed. Uh, okay, you're, everyone's done for the day. No one needs any more gas. Uh, that, so that part... Doesn't uh, really make sense to me. Uh, he had the friend give him a note. The note said, give me all your money or I will shoot you. Um, so the, the guy handed the note over. He gave him all the money. Um, and then I, I guess the, he closed the store. I, I don't really know, but the police came. The problem was they didn't really have it all... Uh, you know, the, the friends have it, having it all on the same story and all buttoned up because they quickly f- figured out through cameras who uh, did the robbery. They found him, and he just, like, immediately confessed it and was like, yeah, uh, he wanted to close the store early, and they, they told me to do this. So what? So he gave the guy gives the money back. The friend who robbed the store is like, here's the money. I just did it to get my friend off work. And they were like, okay. Well, I don't know if the police were okay, but they found the guy. So basically he's, he asked his friend to, to, to do it. Uh, a, a woman by the name uh, Aaliyah, Aaliyah Locke. And uh, she had her friend, she had some other guy actually be the, the one who goes in there, hands him a note, give me all your money or I'll shoot you. But once they found this guy, he was just like, yeah, Aaliyah told me to it. Uh, her, friend, uh, her friend Johnny wanted to get off early. And, and So the, what's happening to the guy who worked at the gas station? Well, he's, he's been arrested. For what? Um, false, false reporting and robbery? Pretty much. Something like that? I'll tell, you, I'll tell you this. The guy who asked for it, who asked for this guy to rob, I like where your head's at. 
You got a big heart. You know, you, <laughs> Isaiah you, Jones. You're thinking outside the box, Isaiah, and I appreciate that about you. But let me tell you something about what, what's the girl's name? Aaliyah Locke. Let me tell you something about Aaliyah Locke. Aaliyah Locke is a true friend. Aaliyah Locke says, What do you need? Let me get someone else to do it for you so I can just chill. That is a friend. Aaliyah Locke is our JRVP, Listener of the Week. And I'll tell you right now, right the JRVP, now. JRVP, listener, JRVP, the JRVP Listener of the Week. That's a good friend. They've all, uh, I think, been arrested, by the way. She was arrested for uh, uh, providing text messages or embezzlement. What did she? She, she was arrested for being a pal. So uh, the, the guy who started it all, charged with embezzlement and conspiracy to commit a fel felony, the guy who did take the money is still charged with conspiracy to commit embezzlement, possession of a firearm. Uh, he, had a form he had a conviction of a felony uh, formerly, and he wasn't supposed to have this Should've firearm. Should have brought the gun, bro. Yeah. Should have brought the gun. She, uh, she also was arrested uh, as well. That, the guy who came in and did the robbery is an idiot. Because it's all set up. It's you and one other person who's in on it. You don't need a gun. It's like, let me go do this thing. Let me see if I can get in trouble for the most by bringing a gun. <laughs> I do like when criminals come up with like the most complicated solution to a very simple problem. If it was that big of a deal, it's just like, just close the store and leave. Bro, get up early, <laughs> put on a hoodie, wear a hat, sneak up to the store before it opens, Put airplane, put like airplane glue in the lock. Mm. They can't open the door. You get the day off work. Mm. If you really need it, you don't have to do a robbery. Or ask Samantha to cover. Like she's always looking for extra hours. One time when I was when I was in high school, my friends and I were playing mailbox baseball. Right, we're like we're driving down the street in my friend's van, and we got a baseball bat and we're leaning out the window hitting mailboxes. And I hit, I go to hit a mailbox and I hit the box and the bat comes back off the, off the thing and smashes a window of the van. Glass goes everywhere. All we should have done is gone to back to my friend's place and told his parents, hey, we were playing basketball, broke the window, we'll pay for it. That would have been the easiest thing in the world. We, were, we got too smart for our own good. We drove to the mall, put through a rock in the car and said someone threw a rock into the window and reported it to the police. So they're like, oh, okay, like whatever, we leave. And then they find the glass near the mailbox and they're like, oh wait, this is the same thing. This is the same colored glass. And we, got, we all got busted. We all got in trouble. And we're like, <laughs> so dumb for oh, like being too smart for our own good. Don't do that. Airplane glue in the lock. You're good. Let's move it on. I've got to pee so bad. Last headline. Guys, listeners, if you're listening right now, if you're watching on YouTube and you have to pee, hold out. You could hit pause and pee whenever you want. You could pee while you're listening. Don't do it. Stay with me on this. We're together now. You could just put on a diaper. Pee into that. No? That's not how diapers work. No. You don't have to pee. Put on a diaper and pee in it. You, you're wearing the diaper all day <laughs> so you can pee in it. We wrap right up. Aaron, uh, am I right? Yeah, you're am right. I correct? That's you're correct. Right. I mean, I have a child. So. I want uh, to really stretch this thing out now. See, Anthony is uncomfortable as possible. I will get up and leave. <laughs> Nobody wants that. Uh, we wrap up Body Parts Day here at JRVP with the story of Dale Wheatley, uh, an office worker uh, who coordinates transportation for a medical research company. Wheatley recently complained about how the company was treating some of the bodies uh, that are donated to the company. Complained to the bosses that, like, we're not treating these bodies right the way that they should be treated. One day he goes to lunch, comes back to his desk, and he finds three severed heads sitting at his desk. Now, are they facing out or are they facing in? Does he see them when he walks into his office or when he sits down at his desk? I don't think he has an office. He's not that important. It looked like he had a cubicle in the middle of the office. It was a godfather situation. I think they were in a bag. I think they were in separate bags. It would be crazy if they were just out of the bag but I don't know that for sure. I'm pretty sure they were all in the bags. But he said at no point that he's ever worked there has any body parts uh, ever been put on his desk for any reason. He's like a, a coordinator who just like works on transportation of where the trucks are going to go. Uh, and he saw this as clear retaliation for him complaining 
essentially to HR. They're like, yo, you're going to complain about us? We're going to put some some severed heads on your desk. Heads, in, three severed heads in three bags is not a, is not a good prank. It's, it's just not like a prank. Hey, here's it's a what threat. We could do it's a to threat. You. No. It's like a, hey, you're mad about the bodies. Here's bodies. If they were out of the bags, on, like on their necks, looking at him, if they had been arranged so they're just like looking at him like at angles, that's cool. Throwing them just in a bag, that's lazy. That's a bad prank. But it's not, I don't think it's intimidation. I don't think it's retaliation. I think it's a prank. It's not a prank. It's retaliation. For it's intimidation. He says his boss walked by. He, he asked him why the heads were at his desk. And uh, the boss answered, I don't know, Dale. There's a lot of strange things going on. <laughs> Dale, get a new job. You don't want to work well, there. Well, that's happening now. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, Dale. A lot of strange things going on. No one's saying we're going to cut your head off. They're just like, hey, you're mad about the bodies. Here's, here's heads. They're saying shut the fuck up. Stop, stop sticking your nose into business that isn't yours, essentially. Uh, and if you're going to complain about it's basically about the people uh, who complain to HR at your company and then your bosses find out about it immediately, which, by the way, um, it happens. It's true. It happens. That's true. But they also work in a dead body place where they could just reach into a thing and grab three heads and throw them on the desk. It wasn't that. It wasn't like he had to go find the bodies and bring them in. He doesn't work at a Del Taco. And they're like, shut the fuck up, Daryl. This is a different story. I'll tell you this, though. You've got to be fucking dumb to donate your body to anything. Yeah. Listen, if you don't die in a fire, you need to find a way to get rid of your body with fire. Do not donate it to anything. I had a thing in my will. I get put into, um, I think I get put into like composting, like human composting. I'm not sure of that. I may have done, I'm not getting, I'm not getting. Uh, a, so um, not like the regular bin or the recycling bin, but like the brown one. It's like a bunch of bodies. Let's just yeah. throw them all in a thing. And then you just become one. It's like all the bacteria or whatever. I think that's me. I know I'm not getting burned up because that's bad for the environment, but I would never donate my body. I used to think it would be funny to donate my body. Because imagine if you're in med school and you're like, oh, I'm a fan. You know, like if you just like, so, if you see my corpse come across your desk, that would freak you out so bad that I would love to do it. But, uh, but yeah, don't, do not donate your body to anything. They're just throwing it around. They don't, the people who work I in these places don't I think I donated right now. I think I'm on, on the list. I donate organs, great. That's different. Take my organ, put it yeah. in somebody, yeah. cool. That's different. Go ahead and do that. Those people are like, they're careful with things. It worked these out for the These yeah. assholes are just, are just swinging things around. You don't want that. Do not donate your body. And Daryl, quit your job. Dale. Um, Dale. Yeah, he had been saying how rats were chewing through storage bags and like biting on the cadaver's feet and that there was other degradation and decomposition that made the bodies usable or like they couldn't even be studied. because They, they were sort of like a warehouse and in between of like taking the bodies and then giving them to research facilities. But like no one was really paying attention to him. So now he's in this whole legal battle against uh, against the company trying yeah, to take Dale, him down. This isn't your job. If your job is coordinating transportation and you see that there's like rats eating through the, the body's feet, quit your job. You're not going to change anything. Get out of there. You're better than that, Dale. And now it's time for... Choo -choo. Recommendation Station Greg Alright I'm going to start with a book here uh, Anthony recommended it And so that makes me hesitant Because I have a couple of bangers But I got to admit The Guest by Emma Klein With one of my favorite covers of the year too I'm holding it up uh, Is one of my favorite books of the year It was uh, Anthony's recommendation like a month ago it, I was so invested Once I was in on this book uh, I could not really put it down. I almost wanted it to be sh shorter, though, because it was, like, horrifying to be in Alex, who's the main character's shoes. Mm -hmm. she's, she's bouncing around on, in the Hamptons uh, in all these places uh, with ultra-rich people um, trying, to, trying to make it through the week. And I don't want to give too much away, but it's essentially like a grifter uh, situation. Uh, I, it really affected me where it stuck in my head. When I went to that wedding, Tom's wedding, where I didn't really know people, it just like made me want to you know, steal people's purses and see what I could get away with. It made me, I know it takes place in the Hamptons, but it made me think of the vineyard. Yes. And I was like, I was seeing everything as the vineyard. Like, what if I had just been kicked out of whatever and I'm just like, I'm stuck on this island for a few days. Mm -hmm. Like at, at 11 o'clock, everything shuts down that like, you're fucked. If you haven't found a party or something that it was like, it was a, a great book. I got the one our way back from uh, Connecticut. 
I bought that for Liz at the airport, uh, a copy to read. And she was like, oh, yeah, I'm, that sounds good. And then read a chapter. And I was like, I've never told you you've got to finish something. Mm. You're going to finish this book. <laughs> oh, shit. I, I don't care if it takes her years. She's finishing that book. The Guest by Emma Klein, one of our favorites of the year. If you, if you like Otessa Moshveg, it almost felt like an Otessa Moshveg mm -hmm. character yes. uh, in this situation. Yes. Uh, very much a, uh, a JRVP double rec. Aaron, you got any recommendations this week? Uh, I watched that um, The Curious Case of Natalia Grace. Have you heard about that? We talked about that on here, but we, I have not, I have not seen the, uh, the doc. Yeah, it's, it's worth watching, but man, what a, it's an insane story. And everyone in it is pretty much nuts. Hmm. Sounds good. We heard we yeah. heard we heard of uh, from some listeners uh, after we talked about that that uh, mm -hmm. story. They did watch the documentary and say you have to watch it. It's crazier than you could imagine. My recommendation is uh, I, earlier this year I recommended a book, one of my favorites I've read in a, in a while, called uh, Razorblade Tears. Uh, by uh, S.A. Cosby, one of my new favorite uh, crime writers. He had a new book come out uh, like a week ago. I read it immediately. As soon as it came in, I bought it. It's called All the Sinners Bleed by S.A. Cosby. It is about a, uh, a black uh, sheriff in a small town who's got to got some crazy uh, violent crimes on his hands and has to deal with it. And it's like dealing with the racial implications of, uh, of the town. I've d I think I described... Um, uh, described his last book, uh, S.A. Cosby, as violently woke. Like, it's badass, and it's also, like, dealing with kind of woke themes, but in a total badass way. If you liked Razorblade Tears, you got to check out All the Sinners Bleed by S.A. Cosby. There's a great review by Stephen King in the New York Times last week of, uh, of this book. Stephen King loved it. He called it uh, S.A. Cosby's best book yet, hmm. and I, I, I have a hard time arguing, even though I've loved all of his books. All the Sinners Bleed by S.A. Cosby just came out. Check it out. You'll love it. And that was... Choo -choo. Recommendation Station. Debbie, get over your COVID. Get us out of here. Whoa, Nelly Furtado. That's a spicy meatball. Is that okay, Greggy? <laughs>